Hello, everyone. How are we all? Nice to be back in here. And I'm very sorry we weren't here last week. Um, I had a few issues where I couldn't walk on Tuesday morning. So feeling much better. A few of you kind of did me a few messages. So it's nice to know you're a bit concerned. So, yes, I'm feeling much better. Thank you all very much. We'll recover from the wet and windy weather we've been having. So fantastic. What we're going to do now, we're going to look at some Japanese hand sores. Bit of a weird subject. Um, I've used Japanese sores for quite a number of years, different things. It's very popular. And then there also seems to be, I won't say a stigma, but a bit of confusion about, why would I want a Japanese saw? What's it do? I've been trying to figure out why is there that little bit of confusion? What's the issue? So we're going to try and run through some of those things, explain some of the saws, how they're made, what the benefit for you. Maybe the things that don't work quite as well the cons so we're going to go through all of that a little bit if you've got any questions bend in here i've got a whiteboard written up with a few things so i can memorize all of this be it names and everything else of these sorts okay so hope you'll get it all right if you've got your questions you know you can send them in to ben he's gonna throw them at me so you saw traditionally if we had panel saw this sort of thing okay and i can vividly remember um someone saying can i borrow a hand saw and they wanted to rip something down. They were expecting me to turn up with this. I came out with this. Um, slightly different. I can remember I got this comment of, what are you going to do, fry eggs or something? Looks very different. So let's just go through a little bit. Traditional Western panel saw. So Western, no, it gives you an idea. The Japanese saw, you could class as a Far Eastern type saw. I don't like phrasing it like that. Japanese pull saw is a better way of phrasing it. Okay. So your Western saw has been around for centuries. In reality, the European communities, if you like, have had woodwork for how many centuries? Uh, we've made wooden boats to sail around the world. The Japanese have also had hand saws for centuries. All their architecture and everything they build is wooden based of that era. So they had to have something as a basic hand saw to cut stuff with. It's amazing that they are so different. So a Western hand saw, it's a compromise in ways because, first of all, it has to be thicker. Okay, so the gauge thickness here tends to be thicker. It's softer to resist the aspect. If it's a real hard metal and you push it and it buckles and it's that brittle nature, you'll break the saw. So it has to be a bit softer, which also means the teeth tend to be softer because they can be sharpened. Again, if they're too brittle, they will snap off. Tend to be heavy. So most of us, if you start, and especially with this sort of thing, it's heavy down the length of it. The other problem with this is too bad we're pushing it away from us. It has to have that thicker gauge. It's harder to control. So it's more difficult to keep a nice straight cut with. Quite an art to get right. Depending on who we are, hand size and everything else, I get people say, we're not heavy. Can be heavy to hold, okay? It will also need frequent sharpening to keep it razor sharp. Keep it cutting nice and accurately for you. So has quite a few downfalls on that sort of thing, okay? Your Japanese saws, and there is a number, and we're going to go through them. I'll just grab one, okay? They're lighter in weight, so easier to hold. It's not that amount of hurt. They require less force to cut because actually you're cutting, pulling towards you. With them also pulling towards you, everything can be thinner. So let's just show you an idea on that. And we can do that really simply with what I've got here. Now, Ben, we've got a camera too, look. Western saw, something thicker. This is cardboard. So to be able to push it, you need something stiffer to be able to push it through without it buckling too easily. All right, so this is quite stiff. You can see I can uh, give a bit of paper. Uh, but a Japanese sword, you've had your cuts pulling towards you, pulls everything nice and straight. So when you're cutting, you get a nice straight line. Fantastic. Western saw, if you push it too hard and you buckle it, you bend the saw. But it has to be thicker to give it that structural strength. So a Japanese hand saw can be thinner in section. Okay. So this will flex more. Right. It can be harder material. So I'll stay sharper longer. It will hold that edge longer overall. 
So all these things are a benefit. So the curve for this actually is probably about a third of what we've looked at on that bigger saw. So the curve is the width between where the teeth are bent out to give it clearance. So it's actually cutting less material, wasting less. That requires less effort for us to do it. All those things have got to be a benefit. All right. So a Japanese hand saw, well, we've got this here and we're up here. Let's just go to three then, Ben. Let's have a look on there. This has got different teeth, but the teeth actually point towards the handle. I can reach down the other end of the bench. Let's just grab the western saw. The teeth point away. So they're pushing into the workplace. So that tooth direction is very different before we start, okay? All those things become a benefit on this. Okay, Ben, let's just get you up at your stool. You can go flick the chair on a bit of paper for me. It'll help me immensely, okay? So our saws got a whole range of different things, all right? And Ben's flipping the flip chart because there's so much for me to remember on this. I wrote it all out for you. So we can do a number of different saws for you. And part of... I think maybe the confusion and the reluctance to have a go with a Japanese saw is what does what? So maybe it's, it's the fact of panel saw. You can understand that. Tenon saw. Dovetail saw. You know, we're used to those, so we have no reluctance to almost pick those up and use it. Okay, so let's do the same order of what we've just done. Japanese panel saw, all right? A kataba, and I hope I pronounced that right. Okay, so Ben, you can have a closer look on there, I think. Let's have a look at two or three. Okay, good. So we've got our teeth, okay? Sharpened one side, nothing on the back here, nothing restricting it, so we can use it to cut panels with, you can cross-cut boards with, you can rip-cut with this, Okay. In reality, this is set for a rip cut blade on this one. All right, you can get different different teeth configurations will do different for task, but this will do a rip cut. Got lots of clearance here because there's no back, shorter, easier to do, flexible, thinner section than what we've looked at on the other saw. So that's the first one. So it's a rip cut. All right, has teeth that are like lots of sh little sharp knives. That's the best way I can describe it. Okay, Ben, let me just grab. All right. Go on then, do your question. So I've got a question here from Frederick. Okay. Um, he's asking, um, do the Japanese saws have um, longer handles um, because they work better locked under the forearm? Going to get to, going to go over it, but you've hit it beautifully for one of the things I like to use this with for control. So for Frederick's question, you can get that in under here. I find that easier to control with, but you can also use it different ways on hold and we do that as a demo bit as well we're going to show you that but definitely you've got the aspect you how you can hold it and grip it i also find that gives me more control to keep it straighter go on ben you got another one so a question from maria um she's asking what you would recommend as an all-rounder depends what you want to use it for and that goes back if you think to what i said about the saws down here you've got panel sword Tenon saw, dovetail saw, we have different saws for different tasks. Exactly the same with the Japanese things. You need to look at what you want to use it for. There are some universal saws that I'm going to bounce off you. I'm going to show you those. So there are there as a thing. As a universal saw, it's a compromise of different things. No different than if we did it on saw down the other end. You have a rip cut, you have a cross cut saw, exactly the same with the Japanese. But then they've started to develop teeth that are more suited for both tasks. So we will look at, we'll try and show you that, okay, which is good. So we did our panel saw. Something is a cross cut saw. So I'll just have a look then, Ben. Let me come up to there. I'm sliding down the bench. So we've got, right, this has got a back on here. Our blade, much finer teeth. And I can get different cross cut saws to do different tasks. All right, so let's see if I can tell you. This is a catabout, which is a dovetail saw. I was hoping on here I'd written how many teeth this has per, all right? But quite fine. You can get these up to like 26 teeth an inch, which is quite a fine layout, all right? So finer teeth is better for more control, more precise work. No different than a tenon saw and a dovetail saw. You go finer teeth on a dovetail saw, give you more control to do those cuts. So definitely a thing to think about. So we've got... All right, our cross cut. Last thing we're going to look at, I've got one on the bench. All right, so we have 
All right, I'll tell you, we've got a rip cut, a cross cut. This is a Ryoba. Now, this is a compromise, if you like. Now, the first two saws I've shown you have quite a steep history in Japanese woodwork. This is about 150 years old. That's new for them, definitely. This is a compromise of the two because they have two different teeth layouts. And I think you can see them nicely there. I picked out the biggest saw I can to show the teeth. Really coarse teeth this side. Sorry, other side. I'm there. Let's go down here. Get my fingers on there. Go back to camera free for a minute, Ben. Let's just have a look on there. So coarse teeth this side. Okay. That's our rip cut. Cross cut on the other side. And go careful. I've just done running your fingers up and down. I know we've... Uh, some of the MDs here have been to the factories in Japan where these are made, and they are fluently told you're not allowed to touch the saw, it's sharp. So when these get these out of the packet, they are razor sharp. So we have rip cut, cross cut on one saw. So you can actually use it both sides. Okay, really useful for that. Downside with this, you can get a little bit of drag if you're ripping down something. So if, if you want a general purpose carpentry type saw, that's the thing to go with. If you're not going to clean up too much, you want something that's going to give you a finer finish, you want something with a finer tooth in it. It's as simple as that. And it's as simple as that with normal dovetail saw. Ben? Okay, so a couple of questions here. Um, first one's from Fuller. Um, has anybody ever fitted it with a Western-style handle instead of the, um, the kind of... Uh, Someone said that they, they've been looking stuff. at my write-up, haven't they? Okay, <laughs> so... This leads to nicely. Okay, let's just explain this. And this is something I was going to throw in later. One of the cons I think people definitely have, first of all, they're unsure about the names and terminologies of the saw. So that throws them on what they've got to buy. If you looked on our website and stuff, you'll find we label stuff. We'll give you the Japanese name, then we'll describe what's going to be useful. That's an advantage. Next thing people don't like, I don't know, I'm used to holding here. I want to hold it like that. Look at that, I can do that. So this is over the top. Some people don't like that. You think your grip here is like different. That's not as comfortable to do with this on the inside of your arm. I tend to grip over the top and put my finger over the top. That works quite nicely. One of the things we've done the last few years, so we've been, or we approached one of the saw blade manufacturers we deal with in Japan, and we asked them to make Japanese saw with a pole style handle. So you've got your traditional, if you like, dovetail shape handle. Okay. Give you something easy to do. So yes, there are those sort of options coming through. All right. So hopefully that explains that one. But that was something going to throw it later, but you've asked, so let's do it. Okay. And? Um, so a question from Callum. Um, this is about monkey puzzle, um, about uh, turning. Um, so... Um, Jason, do do you find that monkey puzzle after it's been roughed out and finished um, is found that there's not much movement? Is that normal? It can move a bit. Now uh, it depends on which way you're turning it. So if you saw the stuff I was doing when we did the store thing, Basingstoke and High Wickham, I had some big logs that I've taken about 15 inch diameter. They are end grain bowls, so they're a bit trickier to turn, not getting too much movement ring wise. If you're cutting and you're using it as a normal bowl blank, yes, you'll get more problems. You need to look at where Colwyn's done his rough turn the bowl, it will shrink across the grain like any normal bowl blank. So, depends on which way you're trying to turn it. If it's end grain, not so much. You'll still get some, um, but I tend to try and turn them down to about six mil thick, soak them in oil, and then I'm sanding them after. If they're going the other way, so cross grain is a normal bowl blank, you will need to rough turn it, let it dry. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Throw Sorry. it off the, off the, okay. uh, Sorry. the source. Um, and then a question going back to the source. Um, Robert's asking, can the source be sharpened? You can. But okay, so a normal hand saw, we could sharpen that. Craig used to do this thing by hand. Okay, I've hand sharpened hand saws years ago. Now, Japanese saw, which we haven't got to the point of so much yet, do you think how the blades are constructed and what they are, they will need sharpening a lot less. Okay? Give you a comparison. I've known with certain people that will have to sharpen a Western saw that we've just looked at. For a panel saw, if it's resharpenable and good quality ones are resharpenable, you'll pay good money for them. All right? 
But you would have to sharpen that seven or eight times in comparison to what we're going to do for your Japanese saw because the teeth are harder on these, so they're going to last longer. All right, so you sharpen it less. Most of the Japanese saws, though, and while we're talking about sharpening, if you don't want to sharpen it, you change the blade. So if it does become damaged, broken, bent, which we'll go through as we go through the demo a little bit, hopefully, okay, or it gets blunt, you can change the blade. Buy a spare blade. Certain people kind of go, but that, that's money. Yeah. You have a saw sharpened, it's going to cost you money. Um, comparative thing, two dump tail saws, different manufacturers. Japanese one, you pay, I think it's about 35, 40 quid for that. So the Japanese one. That's about £70 for the dovetail saw. So you're paying more to start with for something actually that's not going to last as well long term because you're going to need to keep it sharper. So those things all add up as a thing. You can Japanese, sharpen Japanese saws, but you've got to have some special files and everything else. It's quite an art. And these have a three-point configuration, if you've ever looked at it. It's like little knives. Very tricky to sharpen by hand. So most people know I would just change the blade. Um, 25 pound for a spare blade, I think, is somewhere as a guide for how many hours? Oh, I don't know. Okay, right. So, all right up to there. So, we've got uh, three types of blade or saw. We have a backless one, which is a Kataba, which is our rip saw. Try and memorize this. Our uh, Dazuki, which would be things like a dovetail saw. This is classed as a Takabaki because we have different types of, all right subheadings under main headings and our Ryoba double-sided okay so have different things there Ben I need you to go and flip your bit of paper again now okay just do that one so I'm going to move a few saws about try and remember what I've got on my next page now okay uh, so Katiba we've said has no back that's quite important so it's all those things all right turn and saw Suzuki is a back saw. Now, going to go through different, and we've got different makes and manufacturers we've dealt with for years. Now, going to give you something that's weird and wonderful. This is a dovetail saw as such. I know it's an icky dam. We've done this for 20 odd years. I bought my first one. Okay. I think I've still got the first one there. I use it as a small dovetail saw. It is quite small, very hard material blade, so it holds its edge nicely. I do need to look after it when I put them in the drawer at home or hang them up. Think about how you're storing it so you're not going to damage it. Don't go dropping it can be a problem as well. All right? Just different sizes. So you can get different sizes, so it's no different than you can with anything else. The finer the tooth configuration, the more accurately it will cut the slower it will cut, the more time it needs a little bit, okay? All right. So, okay. Then let's just flip your paper again. It's amazing how quick I can go through this. I'm going to put, we put a piece of pine in the vice, okay? All right, great. All right. Major thing that I would say that most people, and I've seen, go back to main one, mate, a minute. Most people have with this as a problem is getting used to what you're doing. If you're used to using something as a western saw, doesn't have to be big panel saw, could be tenon saw, all my force on this is pushing, okay? Trying to drive it forward, and it takes more effort. Thicker section, all those things add up. You've got a Japanese saw. I don't need so much effort. What should I play with? Let's let's go with dual edge way over. Double one. Okay. We can do a rip cut and a cross cut. So I'm looking at my teeth now. I've got rip teeth on the bottom here, cross cut on the top. They are very different. I don't know if you can see on there. Okay. Can you see different teeth shape? You look carefully. Okay, so ones here are like lots of little knives, much longer and thinner. That's my cross cut. My rip cut is coarser too, over here. If you push this, I can bend it. So I'm pushing it against the end of the piece of wood. I can make it flex. So if you do that whilst you're trying to cut with it, you're going to damage it. If you pull it, it stays straight. Okay, so 
What do we want? We want rip cut down there. Where to start is another thing people worry about. Now, on the Ryoba source, or even on, if I can find it, it's there. Just trying to say, not all of these have. Flip round. I've got rips on there. Does that have? Yeah. That's probably the best one to show you. Let's just have a look on free, Ben. I'll put that one down. If you look carefully on there, guys, and I know it's quite a tricky thing to do. I'm hoping you guys with your 56-inch TVs that are watching on there going to be good. The chief nearer the handle, my finger is here, are finer. They get coarser as I come up to the tip of the saw. Finer start cut near the handle, coarser near the tip. That really adds up. So finer, coarser. Even on that rover saw I've got on here, I have finer teeth. Of course, the ones near the tip really makes a difference. So you need to use that. Now, for me to do this as a cut, and it puts some people off, start on the back edge. Get yourself in a position you feel comfortable. So if it's too high, drop the wood down. This is advice is a bit more uncomfortable for me to use, but it allows me to show you more, in, more info than using the vice on the other side of the bench. So from there, I can get that in. I pull it towards me gently. Don't need too much pressure. Okay, get my start point. Trying to watch what we're doing on the cameras to make sure I'm showing what we need. I've got some fingers of groove to sit it in. Body stance is important. Need to be able to pull the handle through fluidly. You can stand directly in front of the saw, both hands. I tend to stand to one side, bring it round. A traditional Japanese woodworker would be sat down. What I thought. Oh, okay, so... There, I can pull this towards me. Okay, my stroke when I return very light, a little bit of pressure, but down. A Japanese saw has the weight it needs to do the cut. Yes, you can put more pressure in, but you've got to get the pressure action right. Of down, relax, down, relax. That's really important to get right because the minute you start trying to push going away you're going to bend the saw how quick will this cut so i'm using both hands my left hand here beautifully just comes across the top i can use that to bridge down Frederick, you asked that question earlier about the fact of putting your hand across the top here and under my arm if i'm doing something like a dovetail something more precise where i want to be really accurate i get in there for this just to quickly rip that down I can do that to there. So I can bring it up a bit. I'm trying to get myself square again in the voice. Bit out. All makes a difference. Again, this hand's doing such a tough. Now, this isn't the coarsest one I could have picked up, but that's cutting quite fast. Take it out. Oh. Now, we've done rip cut. We've got a little bit of fluff in the blade here, which is good. We're using a pine. Just going to reach for something going to need now. Other thing you need to think about to get into this, you might want bench hook. If you're going to have a bench hook for this, you'll need it the opposite way round to what we're used to, which would be here, because your work's going to drift away. Um, and go up to there. I can turn the saw over in this case. Going to do exactly the same as I did earlier. Start far side, light pressure, fingertip as a guide. Not too much pushing down. Gently bringing back over. Now, if I drop the handle down, I can get a bit of control. Where do I want to come down to? There. Bring the handle up so I'm cutting more square. I could have clamped it in place. Where are we? Nearly there. A little bit deeper to go. Quite quick and effective. Have a look on fray, look, Ben. Not a bad cut, quite clean. Very quick and easy to do. One other thing people tend to get worried about is the fact of they haven't got the length of stroke they have on a normal bigger handsaw because the blade's not as long. For most of us, that's plenty long enough on where you're pulling pro to, okay? All right, so. We've used our ripsaw. We've used a double-sided right over. We could easily go with let's have 
go with that just a second. You right, Ben? Okay. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. Okay. Okay. So a couple of questions here, Jace. Um, first one um, is from Fuller. And he's talking about there being two different hardening processes. He was saying, um, does one result in a better finish than the um, than the other for a longer life? Okay. So one of the things that they do for a Japanese soil, which is different, there's a technique now which is obviously possibly quite new. Traditionally, a blacksmith would have made the old traditional soils. Each tube would have been heat treated. They now do a thing called pulse hardening which actually it's a great time to show you because I picked up this as a rip cut out of all of I'm trying to think of what I've got maximum color on. All right. Because we do a couple of things on the sewers we have. Now, I don't know, Ben, let's just look on free again. Let's just drop the pine down because I think the apron will be a better backdrop. Turn it round so you don't get the label. Can you look at the teeth? Can you look at the blue color on the tips? Okay, each of the teeth look like they're hardened individually. They are pulse hardened, which gives us hardness, which will retain its edge. Just the tooth. The back of the saw, as much as it's a harder material to say, if you like, stronger, hold that edge better, isn't as brittle. The teeth can be more brittle. Okay, so that pulse hardening is quite important. The reason I had to go with that, these are pulse hardened as well which is the sacooning saws we do. And then they have a nickel plate in which stops the rust corrosion, resin sticking to it, so they don't rust as well. That's another benefit. So that plating is done after I actually do the pulse hardening. And then obviously they use a diamond sharp, from what I understand. Okay. Hopefully, Ben, that answers that, I think. All right. And then we've got one from Frederick as well. Um, he says, unfortunately, um, he's put a kink in his flush cut saw. Okay. Is there a way to de-kink it? Now, you said flush cut saw. You want to, now, it'd be interesting. If it's a really small one like I've got, tricky possibly to straighten. Now, this doesn't have any set. We're going to play with this later, okay? Ben, you can probably just have a quick look on Frey. I'm going to pick this up again later. It's quite flexible. Now, it depends on what you've done as a kink, Frederick. If it's this saw, you might be able to lay it on something flat and gently tap it with a hammer. The hammer will need a bit of a... A radius edge, go careful because you're not going to damage the teeth too much, but you might be able to flatten it out, okay, on that one. If, oh, okay, Jim had the guys when we do the courses and we've done table stuff, and it'd be interesting to know, and it'd be like, Frederick, you'd have to own up, though. The guys regularly seem to bend the tip of this. And it's a fact because it's not quite supported right on the tip here. They're trying to cut a tenon, which is a bit wider than what probably to be used to, and the little saw will do nicely. They catch the tip and they bend it here. Not as easy, but actually, it might be the aspect on here. Change a blade. New blade, I can't remember for these. 14, 15 pound. New saws, probably 25, 30. A new dovetail saw, a lot more. To have it hand sharpened as a dovetail saw is going to cost you more money as well. So, Change a blade if you can. That's quite easy to do. All right. So swapping blades over can be quick and simple. Major thing with Japanese saws, most of them have an interchangeable blade. Okay. Let's just bump that back out of the way. Okay, done. All right. Um, once we've got this and we've done our ones, they each have something. This has screw knob. Um, I wasn't going to do this now, but it's a good time. I want to change a blade in here. Not really the bit of wood coming around the wrong way on there. This looks brutal, doesn't it? I'm not hitting it right. Let's come down a bit. I do a change in the blade on this. I tap out. Now, this might be change the blade, or it might be put it in the toolbox. Store it safer. Travel to and from work, if you like, with that. Look at that. Almost. Okay. Put it in the pockets and walk around the snow. Don't do that, okay? But much smaller... And this is a rip saw I'm holding. And this thing. So. This one. Just check them on camera. How's that curb bit? Goes back into there. If I want to put it back in, I turn the saw over. I hit the black bit now. Look, get it right. Get in the right position will be better. That's better. 
So you swap your blade over really quick and simple to do. Or you might just want to do, as we've said, compact the size of the saw so you can get it in the toolbox. This again, rip saw, no back, point of teeth near the handle. Again, I can go one-handed, but bring that left hand in. Acts as a support. Okay, so quick and simple to do. So there are different rip saws there. That's slower cutting than what we've looked at. Why? Different tube configurations, smaller size teeth. So that all plays a part on what's going to happen. Put that behind us. Maria, you asked that lovely question. Is there something universal? Um, I spare saws, which we've done for years, as I've kind of said with my little dovetail saw, Nicky Dam. Just to bring it in these, these have a different tooth configuration. Again, let's drop us down a bit. Okay. Let's have a look on Freeban. Now, this has a really weird tooth configuration. This has sections with a cutout allowing more clearance. They have, if you like, those longer finger teeth, which I would almost consider to be a cross-cut type blade more than a rip blade. But it is designed to do a rip cut and cross cut. Okay. Ooh, let's go. Let's go back to our bit of pine for a minute, I think. Up to there. Let's, let's have that one. Bring this up. Got the bit still lower, so we can play with that. So this should cut nice and cleanly. Again, use my thumb. Uh, chief configuration, they're pretty much the same size on this side. I'm using the edge of my thumb, lower to start with. Again, this is, um, so babe, let's just go to one. This, was, this relates to Maria's question. I kind of answered it earlier. Do you think this is a combination of two things, if you like? It will allow you to cross cut, rip cut, maybe diagonal thing. Normally, you'd have three different saws to do those things. Even with Western woodwork, you'd have different saws for that. This won't cut as quickly as some of the dedicated rip saws, but it will still do the task. Okay, so, okay. So, we can rip down. We obviously know we can. Oh, put my block in the right way around for my cross cut. We'll pin it in. Cut those off, give me a clean edge. Bring my hand, I want to be a bit more accurate now. I've got to hold it with my right hand on the block, on the left hand. Get the saw, I've got the handle and under my arm. So Frederick was asked about that earlier. Finger over the top. Great grip. I find this I can lock out better, get more control. This helps limit the amount of movement on my wrist. If I want more stroke, I can bring my hand back and do that double grip we've just done. So just even body stance and grip will change how I'm going to use the saw. Quick and simple to cut them off, okay? Okay, right. Most important thing, not too much weight behind the saw. Let the saw do the task. All right, Ben's got another question. Um, well, both Fuller and Maria are asking, um, does that... That type of saw um, that we just used, does that have a name or is that... Um... Oh, right, okay. Down here. So, it is, and I took the packing off. Go to free bin. That's the casing off it. New type. So, it's a Catapa saw, okay? So, it's a general purpose saw. All right, so I'll cut a little bit of everything. Right. The reason I kept the label like it is, is the fact that they're nice and sharp. Best way you can store this, and this also has a plastic packet, a sleeve, but it was going to take me time to put them in and out whilst I'm on here. Store it back in there when you're not using it. That'll help protect it, because with it being hard and teeth, if you start banging against something else, you're going to damage it. Okay? A few of you might say, most Japanese saws are... Softwood. Japanese woodwork, if you look at the history of most of it, is softwood. 
the Japanese saw manufacturers have realised, especially for our market, I suppose, where we're using oak or whatever else, maples, all those things, you've got to have something a bit different. Colin, when he's done his turning room through, has up on the wall really pushed a little caterpillar one we do, red one. You've seen that up on the wall, he's used that. That's a nice little saw, nice and compact. I've got bigger brother, which is that one. Slightly longer again. Again, quite fine, long finger teeth. This is a hardwood saw. Do they recommend this for cutting your hardwood materials? So if you're going to cut lots of hardwood, cross cut, rip cut, this will do it. Okay, good one to go with. All right, again, they've looked at the thing. Now, the most important thing with this, and I have seen some negative reviews, broke it. If you're breaking this, the only way I can see you're going to break it, and I've got cheating probably, I've got my bit of pine. Get it going a bit. It'll cut. They're pushing, not pulling. So if you push it, it's quite flexible. You push it hard and it sticks in the bit of wood, with being more brittle where the teeth are, and it's hardened, yes, you're more likely to snap it. So it's getting used to that aspect of pull, relax. Pull, relax. If you're not used to, so if any of you, and I'm hoping maybe you will, give this a go. You buy yourself a Japanese saw. What would I recommend to do? Find a start point. Have a play with scrap bit of wood if you like. All right, so I'm on there. You have all the time in the world. Don't rush it. Just go. Start slowly. As you become more effective on the use of, you can speed things up. But definitely... So this left hand, actually releasing pressure. Back on. Release. Back on. That's so important. I'm going to go one hand. That will cut. I prefer I'm going to go one hand, fingertip up on there. And I lift a little bit as I feed back through. So I'm not running that risk of binding it, catching it, buckling it. Okay? So that's that thing they recommend for hardwood. Come on then, Ben. We'll do it now. Okay. Um... So Alan's asking, if you were to cut something off the lathe, would you have to put the lathe in reverse? If you're going to cut something off the lathe, either use your parting tool, okay? If you want to use a handsaw, turn the lathe off, okay? Don't go try and have the lathe running and try and engage a saw. It doesn't sound the best idea. Um, other thing with this, if you're going to do that sort of scenario, I tend to have to reach over. Okay, so I grab the whip. If you have access, go to the other side of the lathe, and then you'll be able to. This go. No, I can't do it. You'll be able to hold the whip piece and pull the saw towards you. But you need to stand the other side of the lathe to do it. Remove your tool rest so you don't clip the saw blade against the tool rest and damage the saw because the tool rest is softer metal. That's harder. You'll chip the edge of the tool. Don't go having your lathe running with it. All right, it doesn't sound um. Not a good idea. Okay. Ben, you got another one? Um, Frederick's asking about the colour of the handles. Do they have any significance? About the... The colour of the handle? No, nothing really. The colours possibly... And Ben, you can flip a bit of paper up for a minute, okay? The colour of the handle on these, obviously each saw tends possibly to have a colour relating to what they are. So these are both a Cativa hardwood saw. That would relate to that for that manufacturer. They're by, by a company called Zadsaws, probably the most prominent maker in Japan. They hold 25% of the market in Japan for making hand saws, so very good reputation. The yellow one I'm, I've got here is what they would class as their general carpenter saw. It's like, it's like Star Wars, isn't it? It's like great. Now we're getting to somewhere near, near where this is done, just really, especially if you're doing green oak joint or whatever, or you want a good garden saw, I'd get going. That's quite ferocious of the cut. 
really quick. Um, I have one of those that I cut things like railway sleepers and stuff with. Found it more accurate than anything else. Don't go rushing it. Give yourself time. I have a weird thing with this. I'm not even out of breath today doing this. Okay. That's unusual for doing this, isn't it? Okay. So they're easier to use and takes less effort. We're cutting quite a deep cut on there. We're down to doesn't take many swipes. Let's set something up in a minute maybe where we can look at how many swipes we need. Okay. So major thing with most of the saws, they're lighter to use. Far less effort. Stay sharper longer. Produce cleaner cuts. Oh, now I'm going to do something I haven't done for a few years. So let's have a look. Clue in the decks a bit. Okay. Going to go with a few sort of Autumn Pacific type saws. Want a few things off the rack. So I might as well doing good. One here, I've set up. I think Ben, if you go to Frey, look, let's have a quick look on there. Okay. Drawing out some dovetails. All right, so this is going to show you a little eeky dam thing that I have. Put them in here. Got my square. Because I'm tilting the board in the vice. This looks a bit fussy. But I can cut a straight line. Might be easier to lay the piece of wood up to go straight instead of trying to tilt the saw can be a better way of working. So this has 190 mm length blade and actually has a root cut tooth. So it's designed for what we're doing now. My fingertips, quite fine. The only thing I didn't think about was that little light I could have had. My drip going back now to your grip. I bought finger over the top on that handle. Now this is oak. The finer teeth more suited to doing what we're doing now. Fine work, thinner boards. <laughs> Takes no effort at all. Just the weight of the sword enough just to guide it. Getting a little bit of flex on my vice on the board where it's held. Bit higher than I probably should be, but I want to make sure you guys can see what we're doing. Don't think I've done hand cut dovetails in about 20 years. Nearly there, one on the outside edge. So quick to cut. One side, I turn it round. I can lay that out, do exactly the same. You get the idea I would have thought. We're actually getting, I don't know if you can really see the cut, nice, clean, but very thin cut. So we're sitting out thinner section. The thinnest saw, this will be one, has a blade thickness of 0.3 of a millimeter. Wow, so that takes a lot less effort. So it's removing less material. I don't need to work as hard. Also means I can be more accurate and cut dead on a line. So all those little things add up. Really good little saw. Okay, a Stuber saw, which is, again, a subheading heading of one of the rip saws in reality of this. And it's just your best plywood that you, you got in the other week. That Okay. Uh-oh, he's smiling at me now. We had to buy him a special sheet of plywood, so he's just... Just setting up a few things on here. Going to have a clamp, piece of wood on the top. Just going to set that up. Okay. The Stuber saw has a curb tip. Go to Frey, Ben, let's have a look. Has a curb tip on here. Like I said, rip teeth. No back. Now, the beautiful thing with this, if I get it in the right position, and I can't come too far forward or I cut the vice in her. So you want to cut in on the board. I can actually do it using those front teeth. I can create a groove, get in there. Come back a bit more, open it up. Get longer, got a blade through. Now I can start to cut that 
So I can actually cut, if you like, a hole in the middle of a board. Cut it out a square. You might want it to fit over something. I think you can see where I've cut through. Let's have a quick look. Without dropping it on the floor. Doesn't show too much there. Bring it around. There you go. Look, you can see the tip of the blade come through. Okay. So we can cut all the way through. Beautiful. And that's quite unique. I think we're probably the only people I know that keep that as a saw. So the curved tip. Uh, coming down. Again, obviously interchangeable. One other thing, and I thought I might have had as a question. This is a bit coarse. I could go, and the teeth on the front are quite coarse. Do they splinter plywood? We've all done that scenario thing, haven't you, where you want to cut a sheet of plywood, I get lots of breakout, I don't know if nothing more annoying. As with any saw, it's going to depend on how coarse the teeth are. Also, the cutting action can be a part of that. If you're cutting dead square on it, you're going to bust out the back. Or in this case, in fact, you're coming their way, you could splinter it. Because you'd be cutting. For me to do this, I'd actually probably draw my line on. I might even start right down where I am now. Right here. Right, I'll draw my line. Fix on the bench would be good. I've raised it up so I've got a little bit of clearance. And again, different saws. I don't know where I am there. Look. Just want to hold my ply. Put it this way. Not a lot of big break out there, is there? That looks pretty clean. All right. That's reasonably coarse saw. If we go finer saw. So this is got a back on. Different sound. Thinner gauge again. We've got very little break out there. Okay. So things like type of saw, how fine the teeth are, are all going to play a part in that. All right, so let's put them back up on there. So. Um, run around to here. Well, Frederick, you said about flush cut. Can have that on there. Come on then, Ben. Let's do your question. Um, so I've got three or four questions. That's great. Um, I mean, I was worried we were going to get no <laughs> questions on these Japanese handsaws. Oh, come on. Okay, <laughs> great. Right. Nice interest. to have some questions. Guys. Keep um, coming. There's a very quick one for me. If you that's can do yours right. if you so, like. Um, Alan's asking about um, rehydrating wood for, for spoon carving. I've never done it, um, but my understanding is that you, it's a mix of uh, alcohol and water. Um yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't completely soak it. Um, you don't want it to, as it the uh, the water, not the sap dries, as the water dries, it can, um, you know, change the shape or it could potentially split. Um, but yeah, I've I've heard about it. Um, it's um, not something I've ever done though, so I can't give you any advice on that. Um, Jason, um, some of the saws have uh, very good and useful covers. Um, but others like the Ryoba double-edged saw doesn't. Um, are there any suggestions to provide a protective cover? I tend to use, and it's weird. I mean, um, those of you who can remember things like the poster shops, you can get poster clips that you put on these. That would be a great way. Um, I think we've looked at lately, I've seen somewhere some saw blade covers. Now, we used to sell covers to go on these. Some of them do come in with stuff. Um, I said to you about poster sort of stuff. This is the sort of plastic tube. Can be worth trying to find that sort of thing. And yes, if you, especially if you've got your toolbox and stuff, it's going to be easier if I come on the right end. Put it on here, you've got to put it on the far end. Okay. Can be worth looking into. So those sort of things. Some of the saw manufacturers do have them on. Others will have maybe a paper sleeve. Okay. It does depend on... Um, the secluding source from memory when we get them in new, I think they have a cardboard sleeve. And again, it's worth using for as long as you can. We went to cardboard sleeve because obviously it's more environmentally friendly than a plastic sleeve. Okay, so 
that's something to think about. But you can get plastic saw covers, which, yeah, they would be good. All right, something to protect it. You want to try and stop things banging against one another and damaging, especially dentistry. One of the biggest problems I had over the years is a learning curve, from my point of view, stop things hitting one another, taking the edge off or breaking the teeth. And, right? and could you remind us of the name of the one with the curved um, the, front? A stuba saw. A stuba. All right. It is spelled. Can you go a long way down to three? There. All right. Now, the only thing I will say, and this was a learning curve yesterday when we got this down. This is a new one because I'm missing the one in here. Things are borrowed. Um, if you look on the website, then go back to probably two, I think. It'll have a black handle. New stock has just arrived, has a blue handle. Okay. It's a handle, okay? It'll work, I promise, all right? But, right? but the one with the curved tip is really nice for that aspect that you can use and cut into like, that sort of area. But use it as a general purpose rip saw as well. Remember those major things, though. It is cutting, coming towards you. If you push it, you bend it, all right? That's the major thing we want to try and get over maybe we're doing today is the fact of how you use them. So if you pull it towards you, it'll cut nicely. If you force it and push it away, especially if we're used to using traditional saws, gonna buckle it. Takes some learning to do. So biggest thing there, and I said about earlier, that pressure release. Focus on what you're doing. It's something new. So think about how you fry it. Look at the timber when you're cutting. Focus on what you're doing. Think about your action. You will drive a car now. Um, the guys in definitely the UK, Europe. You change gear, you put your foot in the clutch, you change gear, you almost do it without thinking. Get it right with saw when you start practicing, exactly the same thing. It will happen, it will come. It's a new technique, needs a little bit of focusing, okay? All right. All right, so any more? We've got a few, yeah. Come on, man, let's yeah, go. Come I, on, do, I want to do my flash cut saw. Okay, but... um, so Vicky's asking, um, I think probably the yellow-handed one, The um, is that, do the Japanese make a saw that would be good for cutting logs and branches? Definitely. Okay, but okay. All right, so Vicky's on about this. All right, fantastic. If you've got logs and stuff here at home, we'll go. Now, if, Vicky, if you're thinking about, um, and I'm I'm guilty of this. If you looked on the website again, we do fold up handle Japanese saws. So the blade actually goes right inside the handle. They fold up. Um, I keep one in the car because there's been times when I've been there and I found something as a tree that's come down or something gone. Oh, wow, look at that. Um, my wife was a bit shocked that we walked back to the car with a piece of boxwood that was about 12 feet long. It was two inch diameter at the bottom, but up to an inch at the top. It had been blown down and broken well. I think they cut the hedge, actually. We walked back to the car with it. Are you taking it home? I'll show you. I cut it into four feet lengths. Fantastic. Nice to have in the car, nice and safe to keep in the car because the blade folds up. So if you want something like that, great for that. And that's a, that's a garden type pruning saw coarser teeth than you've got the yellow one if you want something you can cut logs and stuff at home with quickly and effectively definitely that big carpenter saw it's nice quick um one of the guys that works here bought oak railway sleepers and put them in his garden and was shocked on how quick that will cut he ranted and raved about it all right so great saw all right ben? and then a little a little bit off topic again um, right. but callum's asking you um he says he's been watching lots of richard raffan videos um on turning um, and, it's, you know, the a great inspiration. Yep. Um, he's asking, what were your inspirations um, with wood turning? Is there any um, ones that you How long have we got? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I started when I was about 12 years old. So the guys that know me and there was a good bunch of you will know that I have quite a good background in turning. Um, I also have a furniture making background, machining background. A few of you are a bit concerned the week that Craig's obviously got promoted, got upstairs doing product development stuff. I'm going to have to cross over a little bit. Me and Ben have been talking about some of the machinery videos and stuff we're going to do. Um, as much as I trained as a furniture maker, I do a bit of carpentry. So a whole range of different things. As much as I could spend all my time in the turning room, I'm having to come and do things like this. Okay. But quite enjoyable, quite nice. It's getting my hand tool skills back up, which is quite good. All right. Okay. Good. Right. So this one, get this for a saw, flush cut saw. And it does do this. Look at that. Now, this has no set on the saw at all and no kerf. Most saws, Ben, let's just go to one, I think. 
If you look down the section of a handsaw, it has the blade and the teeth that are bent out alternately. That's the set. If you measure across the width of it, you get the kerf. From the two points, the teeth bent out was alternate. So I've said to you some of the saw blades will have a 0.3 thickness piece of steel. If you measured across the kerf, it might be up to a 0.45. Got to have a little bit of clearance to stop the saw binding. This has none. It is totally flush both sides. So in reality, I can put it on my piece of substrate and run it back and forward. It doesn't mark it. There's no overhang. Beautiful thing with this, I can get it into there as a flush cut. My clamp's a little bit in the way. Now, what I do need to do, I need to just have a look. Ooh, which one should we go with? This is double-sided. With the label on the top, it's finer teeth, coarser. So I can go with a finer one. It'll be easier to control. Now, major thing with this, look at the left hand working. I can cut that off dead flush. I'll hold these up in a minute. I've given myself really good access now. The one we've just done showed you how compact you could get in between two little areas. Again, thing to remember with this is approach. You can bend it, so you might be right up in a corner or something of a cupboard. But it's cutting, pulling towards me. Course aside, this one. Now I'm hoping camera will show that. Nothing on here, scratch marks, nice and flush. Okay? So really useful as a thing. Look at that. All right. No, it's not for doing those eggs again. All right. I promise you that's all right. Really good little saw. Okay. All right. So lots of different saws there. Um, yeah, go on, Ben. Flip him over again. I think we we'll must nearly be on the last sheet there. That's it. No more paper. Good. Right. Okay. So run through most of those hand saws. Okay. Um. Lots of different things to think about what they are, all right? You want something as a general purpose saw, as a panel saw. The Ryobi saws are double-sided. You get two sets of teeth, finer, coarser, one for crosscut, one for rip. You can get, and again, description in the catalogue will help you know what they are. You can get dedicated small things for dovetails. They will have a back. Finer teeth, more accurate, more control. The Stuba saw we've got, we've got that curved front, no back, because it's done as a rip saw, so you can pass it down for a panel, you can cross cut with it. We said some of these now are coming in with general purpose teeth, universal is a better way of maybe describing that, okay? Quite new, definitely something to think about, okay? And it's amazing on how they're gearing up to look at, maybe Western woodwork. Um, if you think the Japanese have kept this a secret for centuries on what their saws do. Major benefit, as I see it, easier to control, quicker cutting, lighter to use, and definitely the ladies out there, some of you, and I know we're doing courses that that's quite a heavy saw to control. Hold the handle, the handle's too big, got small hands, all those things. I'm not trying to be sexist or anything like that. It's just actually, these can be great. There's no weight. Even for some of us, if we have arthritic problems, maybe that's an answer to look at because they're not as heavy to hold. They feel more natural, okay? What you do need to think about, if you're used to using any kind of hand saw that you've used before, your dovetail, your panel saw, all those sort of things, is the nature of how they work. They cut on a pull stroke. Easier to control as long as you get that action right. Go back to that thing I said, break it down to simple stages when you start. Don't rush it. Got a new toy. Yeah, I know. You want to have a play with it. But just break it down. Nice, simple stages. You'll get the best out of it. Okay? There are different things there, as we said, quite a lot of Japanese sauce. And I think most people are kind of stumped on, but what, what do they do? Hopefully, we've answered some of those questions today. It's been great you've had some questions come in. All right? If you've got any questions on it, you know where we are. You can email us. If you want advice on those, not a problem. We can try and do them. All right? Ben, you got anything else? Fantastic. Good. Thanks for your help in doing the paper. All right. We will see you tomorrow. Ben's got another session tomorrow afternoon. Thank you for joining us.
hope you enjoyed give us the thumbs up hit that subscribe button all those little things we'd love to see you again all right bye